Nice intro. This was in the year 2000. This particular day is so vivid to me, like it's happening right now. About three of us, we were kind of camped out in a small place on the Central Hill Lake in Tennessee. Central Hill Lake is a reservoir. The lake has a shoreline of over 700 miles. If you take a boat out, you can just get lost for days and not find your way back. <laughs> so there was a beautiful place which uh, one of our meditators owned at that time and very graciously they offered it to us. And we were working on something, so we went and stayed there for a few days. Around the, this fabulous home, there were some real tall trees, wild, untouched forest area. And alone I ventured off into these steep slopes and I was just struck by what I saw there. And uh, this poem is a consequence of that. It's titled as America. The brooding darkness of these woods fed upon the native blood. In the twisted tangle of the fallen wood, the spirit of the fallen Indian stood. The brooding darkness of these woods fed upon the native blood. In the twisted tangle of the fallen wood, the spirit of the fallen Indian stood. O oh brothers, your identity a mistake. Those who oceans cross did make. The greed for gold and land laid waste the spirit of wisdom and grace. O oh brothers, your identity a mistake. Those who oceans cross did make. The greed for gold and land laid waste the spirit of wisdom and grace. The children of those who by murder did take, or taintless of their forefathers' mistake. But those who lived fed upon the milk of courage and pride, stand as spirits of defeat and shame. The children of those who by murder did take, or taintless of their forefathers' mistake. But those who lived fed upon the milk of courage and pride, stand as spirits of defeat and shame. O oh, the murdered and the murderous, embrace me, let me set your spirits to rest. O oh, the murdered and the murderous, embrace me, let me set your spirits to rest. This poem is a consequence of a man who stood still probably for over three hundred or four hundred years, someone who was trusted by one who has a certain position of being a chief or whatever, someone whose duty and bond to keep another who was of some significance safe and well, Um, I'm going to stop the video right there. Um, he goes on for another about five minutes, uh, kind of talking about the tragedies of uh, the Native Americans versus the settlers. And, um, and, I, and I want to give some perspective to this discussion. Uh, I live in Arizona, which is very much um, the West, the Wild West. There are a lot of Natives here. Uh, the big tribe is the Navajo Nation, and I've spent a lot of time on Navajo Nation. And uh, so this isn't just out of white guilt that I'm making these statements. This is out of my interaction with Navajo people, um, with Hopi people, with uh, Salt Pima, 
I've had a lot of touch points with Indians, probably more than most Americans have, unless you're in some kind of field that you're doing this. Uh, but your average American, I've had a lot of touch points with, with the natives here. Um, I, I think when you start off with uh, the history of the founding here, uh, of when we came over, in my, in my family, like my last name is Bowling. I predate the Mayflower. I, I predate, I mean, it's like my family was with Columbus. That's how they came over. Like I have been here since before the founding of the country. Um, I was here when the pilgrims showed up, my people, my family. Um, and they settled in uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia. They migrated into Indiana up to the Gary area into Illinois, and then papa, they had me papa. Um, the relationship was very, very um, friendly with the Indians. We needed the Indians' help. They taught us how to to uh, brave the land, the winters, the how to how to when to sow, when to reap, you know, and um, and that took place. That took place very, very friendly. Now, um, you fast forward a little bit, and we had uh, the Puritans who were fleeing um, persecution from the King of England, and they, they worked out the Mayflower Charter that they wanted to come over and do these things and start anew and be a colony. And they brought with them, a, um, I believe, a perverted version of Christianity. And uh, they they were what you would call a uh, covenantal theology, uh, which I th is an error. It is a heresy, uh, and I'm sure within my Hindu friends, um, you guys could uh, say there's Orthodox Hinduism, and then there's there's people who take it and change it a little bit, and you say, well, that maybe that's not the intent of of, of Vishnu or whatnot. I'm I'm guessing. I don't know. You guys can correct me in the comments. And uh, the Puritans came over, and with this idea, they looked at the Bible, and they said, you know what? We have replaced Israel. We are just like um, uh, the Israelites. God gave the Israelites a commandment to wipe out the Promised Land because it was theirs. And they, the Puritans then carried that out, and they were misguided. Uh, and it was wrong. And they started off with... Um, uh, Unfair trade, I think, with the Indians when they showed up and said, who owns the land? And the Indian chief says, uh, everybody owns the land. What are you talking about? The land's for everybody. And they say, oh, I, okay, well, we would like this land. We want to settle. Well, we'll give you some beads if you leave. And they saw glass beads, and they thought they were jewels. That was wrong, right? That was wrong. And um, we did that. And when the Indians realized that they were being um, taken advantage of, they took up arms um, and began to fight against the settlers. And the big problem that the Indians ran into is the white man had gunpowder and the Indians had arrows. Um, very much turned into a one-way slaughter. Um, very much um, this idea of manifest destiny showed up in American history. And manifest destiny is this. Manifest destiny is... If we can beat them, it is God's will. And that became the mantra of America as we marched out. And, um, and, and we did evil, no doubt, to our fellow man. I'm not disputing that. The Indians did evil also in return. And, um, and we drove the Indians on the brink of extinction. This is true. What uh, Sadaguru has said is, is true. Uh, his poem is painful to listen to as a white man because it's true, but I have to understand that I had no part of that. I'm, that's not me, dude. That's not me. And, um, and it's unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate uh, that that happened. I can tell you now um, what we have done for the Indians. Um, the, the average Indian... Um, when they turn 18, gets about uh, $100,000 in cash, American dollars. They get uh, free medical, free housing, free college. And then they get, uh, I think it's, 
it's anywhere between three to five thousand dollars a quarter so they get that payment four times a year for using the roads and the land and whatnot and then they get a share of the casino money um so there there is payment being made back to the indians um yeah i don't know man it just really i gotta just be honest man that poem was uncomfortable to listen to as i tried to disown it <laughs> and own it at the same time i don't know uh sad sadhu guru got me got me i don't know time to move on to another video i'm feeling very uncomfortable time to move on